Welcome to Sleepless in Singapore. This podcast aims to explore the experiences of everyday people. The artist, the cook, the teacher, the taxi driver, all have stories to tell and opinions to share. Even more interestingly, they have answers to questions we have all pondered over. For example, why is it so difficult to get a taxi at 5pm? How much money does the Michelin star chef earn in Singapore? What on earth is pop art? Today, I'll be speaking to Ashley Christodarsen, a local artist who does brilliant computer-generated artwork. His work can be viewed on his Facebook page named Jungle Eye. It can also be seen on his website www.jungleeye.com. We'll be talking about why some art pieces are worth so much money, what good art is, and what we can do to push the art scene forward. So just chill out, grab a scotch or a glass of coke, and enjoy Sleepless in Singapore. Okay, we are on for the first ever episode of Sleepless in Singapore. How are you, Mike? <laughs> How are you, Ash? Fuck, <laughs> <laughs> that's like a few seconds in and already I fucked it up. Okay, how are you, Ash? I'm good, Nick. Thank you for having me on the show. Okay, now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to Ashley Chris Christ. To Darson? Chris to Darson. Chris to Darson. Yeah. Ashley Chris to Darson. Now, Ash is actually a local artist, in a way. Uh, he does really, really good artwork, right? And I've always thought that artists were a little bit frou-frou. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> okay, until I met Ash. Okay, and that, I think that's the way with me and a lot of different art, uh, art forms. I didn't, I never liked singing until I met a singer. Got it. You know, and... Uh, now I really love live singers. I still don't like music singing, you know, and stuff like that. But I love to watch a singer live. Mm. And Ash has really, really good artwork on a website called Jungle Eye and on its Facebook called uh, Jungle Eye as well. So, Ash, why don't you tell us a little bit more about your art? Okay. So, it started actually after um, I, I took this photography course while studying in Australia. And... Uh, there was a particular tutorial where my uh, lecturer told us how to use basic, basic Photoshop skills. Here's five different images. What we're going to do today is learn how to layer them together and make one image out of all five of them. Now, that tutorial just completely changed, changed my outlook on art and the possibilities of what art could be. I'm not a very tech savvy guy, but learning how to layer those five images and to make one image out of it transformed the next like 10 years of my life. Yeah. Right, so if, um, for those of you who don't know, you can check out facebook.com and have a look at Jungle Eye. And I think um, he, you're the only one with the name Jungle Eye on Facebook? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so Jungle Eye, I'll just show you guys a little bit over here. Jungle Eye has some insane artwork. Okay, look at this stuff. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to put this up on the camera. So for those of you on the podcast downloading the audio, I'm sorry you can't see it. Just go and check out facebook.com. All right, so this is it. This is Astral Highway by Jungle Eye. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is gorgeous. Could I just scroll forward like Yeah, this? go for it. Okay. Oh, man, Actually, look at Actually, scroll this. back. Scroll back. Okay. Yeah, the more the newer pieces are there. Okay, well, look at this thing. This is gorgeous. All right, so what's uh, yeah. I actually wanted to ask you looking at this because uh, mm -hmm. I asked a few few of my friends and they all told me they saw kind of different things in this. I mm -hmm. want to ask you what do you see? Okay, I see um okay, I see there's the clearly a whale in the middle. Okay. Okay, and the whale is transferring himself from one realm to another in a way i think that's what you're trying to represent here okay so yeah. that's interesting that you picked out the whale immediately mm -hmm. um a lot of the kids i asked in school the ones i teach they all saw either a seal or a penguin they could not for the life of them see a whale <laughs> okay okay right yeah so um i think with all the image manipulation that gets done to the work mm. um new elements are uh, brought in Things lose their old forms and gain new ones, okay. and uh, there there tends to be like a like an abstraction at the end of it, you know. Actually, now that you mention it, 
that kind of looks like a fin, and then the thing that I thought was the whale's fin looks like an eye. That kind of seems like an eye over there. Yeah. Yeah? So it becomes a topic of conversation later on Or at least when you're scrutinizing the piece Different perspectives get thrown into the pot mm. And then, yeah, people talk Right, so I'm just going to scroll through and look at a Go couple Go for it, yeah oh, That's very interesting, that's very, very good Yeah. Now let's look that's at a fair. couple more Right, I noticed that you always have um, a figure In yeah. the middle, al- almost always in the middle of oh, fucking hell, look at this piece of <laughs> shit here. Look at this motherfucker right here, come on guys Look at that. That is gorgeous. So okay, what this, is this? This piece actually, um, it's just from a series called Echoes from the Dream Real. Mm. So um, it's it's sort of an explorative series. Like um, in this particular scene from the series, you have this woman and she's, she's entering a gateway. And uh, that gateway, she has no idea what lies beyond it, but there's a light there and it calls out to her. Um, I wanted to explore more of like this magical realism. So if I've got elements here um, from very real sources, to put it. The specks of like fireflies or stars there were taken from a, a NASA Hubble telescope mm. picture. So they are very real elements. The, the hair on this woman uh, is actually a photograph of a wig. Right. So you've got many, many different elements coming together. I've got clip art for the lady's arms. Um, the elements of the dress were taken from the head, the headdress of a Hindu figure. Mm. So you've got elements from all over the place coming together to form a cohesive, like, new reality. Okay, so I just want to point out, for those arms over there, yeah. are they symmetrical arms? Are those the same arms? That no, you get? no, they're not. How do you get them to look so similar? So yeah, no, they were from the same um, person, from the same clip art torso. Ah, so right, I just right, took right. the torso up, um, distorted it slightly to face um, the gateway she's looking at, mm-hmm. just to get that little perspective in there, you know. Right. Okay. That's yeah. fantastic. And what is this white stuff here? That. White um, stuff. That white stuff is from several, several different layers, and then putting the piece. Uh, regenerating the piece over and over again through different filters. Right. So I get the exact texture I'm looking for after I relayer everything together, you know. Okay, that is really, really, really good. Uh, this this Thanks, piece over here, I saw another piece on your your website. That was my favorite. This Thanks. is amongst my favorite. This is going to so. be my, uh, my sister's uh, housewarming gift, actually. Right. Yeah. So talking about that... Um, how much would you charge for a painting like this? I mean, wh- do you con- consider this a painting? Well, I mean, like it's a digitally assembled painting, right? right. So, um, it depends. You want it as a poster, which is obviously a cheaper option. Mm. Then you've got canvas prints, which are obviously a more expensive option. Mm-hmm. Um, canvas prints go nice because, you know, you can frame them in such a way. Mm-hmm. You can get them stretched on the canvas. It looks very... It, it looks like something you'd see in a gallery, mm. right? But... Having said that, like I've tested the poster prints and they come out just as great. Mm-hmm. Um, you can get them framed too. Um, much cheaper option and still looks as great. You know. Right. How much would a poster cost? So a poster like this, mm-hmm. let's say you wanted like an A1, like a typical A1 size poster. Because of all the work I put in, I mm-hmm. wouldn't charge like your regular regular amount. So I mm-hmm. would charge something like... Seventy-five to eighty, eighty-five dollars. That's not. Bad. That's not even. No. That's not even painful. Okay, and how much would a canvas cost? Okay, so a canvas. If you just want the print on its own, I would charge maybe about one seventy-five to two hundred. Right. Okay. Yeah. Now that that's going to lead us on to the next question. Mm. Okay, but now two hundred bucks for a canvas. I assume it's it's big. Yeah. Yeah. It's about. It's like your regular poster size. Okay. Now it's. Um, these are these are digitally edited photos, and for one hundred seventy-five to two hundred bucks, I think it's really really worth it. I want one. I'm gonna order one. Thanks. Man. I'm just gonna look through your website and have a look. Yeah. And um, that's the thing. I think um, you know you know I do magic and stuff like that. Yeah. And um, in a way, I I do consider myself as a bit of a performance artist, not an artist for sure, but a performance sure. artist. And our lives, our artistic lives, in a sense, mm. do cross paths sometimes. Yeah. Right, and um, it's the same with comedians. It's a similar thing to comedians, MCs, uh, singers, sure. band members, you know, and just artists in general. And I think this movement in Singapore, 
um, has to grow in a way, True. right? There's there's many different things that you know we can talk about later, but. For example, Singapore is the unhappiest country in the world. Yeah, <laughs> I saw that poll. It's sad, row. isn't it? What the fuck, man? Yeah. Now, is this your full-time job? Do you do other stuff as well? No, I'm actually an English teacher, just like you. Right. <laughs> okay, so, um, I wanted art to be my full-time career. I wanted to earn off mm-hmm. of it. But um, unfortunately, I don't have a, a business mindset. And I, 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 I sort of like... I introspected and I realized that maybe I didn't want it as badly as I... I, I, I thought I wanted it mm-hmm. um, So I mean I have a steady job now That pays the bills and everything And I thought that Taking up a full time job Would make me less prolific with the art mm-hmm. But it's actually had the reverse Right So it's I, I'm producing more now And now with that stability From the, st- the, the job and everything Life is actually a lot Easy. Less yeah. of a Struggle in that sense, you know. Right. I don't feel like that. That struggling artist in that depresso zone. I was for a long time, and art used to be my uh, my way of dealing with the frustration and things like right. that. But now that things are happier and more steady, mm-hmm. the art is kind of like a reflection of the the happiness going on inside. Right. Actually, the, I asked you the question on purpose because I think I'm hoping to. Um, inspire some of the younger generations as well. Yeah. Right, I, I, when I was much younger, I used to perform a lot more, especially in, sure. in magic and stuff. And I think many people tend to go into work, uh, even though they were pretty good artists early on, sure. and they just drop everything. Mm. You know, and tell themselves that art is not, uh, it's it's not worth their time. Right, you can't make enough money and all that. Yeah. While it may be true, right, that you can't make a full. A, a living with art In a sense I, I can make a living With magic Maybe like $2,000 a month But it's going to be a struggle Sure You know And what's the point Sure Alright So in the end What I did And I think this is perhaps What you do as well Which is You get a job Right You do your regular job as well And you do your art At the same time Don't forget your art Because that's what That's the person Who you really are Exactly You know And um, many 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 people In Singapore I've seen this so many times yeah. Dancers Singers, yeah. band people, they just yeah. drop everything and say, ah, fuck yeah. it, you know, I give up. Yeah. And that is not something you guys should do, I think. Exactly. Yeah. I fully agree with you because mm. dropping that side of yourself, mm. it's like um, either compartmentalizing it or just like completely forgetting an aspect of who you are. And that can't be healthy for you. Mm. So the, the decision I made was to um, let's have it side by side. Mm-hmm. You may not. Um, experience it in the same way that you did before but just knowing that it's still there it's something I can turn to whenever I like just to de-stress from maybe the other aspects of life it is there it's always true to you mm-hmm. and you, you you never turn your back on it Right. it right. gave you so much when you had nothing so like let's keep it as your friend yeah that's one of the things that uh, I struggled with earlier on in my career because I wanted magic to be my full time job mm. right, as a magician, and I at some points I was earning like two plus, yep. two thousand plus. And what I did was, I mean, it was a bit of a struggle because two thousand dollars, you know, in Singapore a month is, it's I would think it's enough, but it's not. I wouldn't say it's not a livable salary, basically, right? And especially when you're traveling to events here and there and stuff, exactly. like that, it's, it's pretty hard. What I did was. I cut my events, the amount of magic I do in half. I raise my prices just a bit. And uh, now I just do the major public holidays and mm-hmm. maybe like one or two events a month mm-hmm. for big corporations. I've done uh, some for like an- anywhere from like Hewlett Packard, Sony. Nice. Um, uh, f- f- anything from MOE. I just did an event for MOE recently. Okay. Right, SAF and stuff like that. And, um, you know, just don't try to pressure yourself into. Making your art your full-time job, you should try, of course, right? And if you can't make your art your full-time job, don't be disheartened. It is always there for you. It is exactly. your relax, is your relaxation process, yeah, right? And it's not always about the finance. Just do your yeah. art, inspire the people around you, and maybe you in end up pushing the art scene mm. in Singapore forward. Mm. Then maybe in the future you could make four or five thousand dollars a month from it, yeah. right? For uh, for those of you who are listening at home, that's fine. That could be your end goal. Yeah, but at the start. Always have something to lean back on, yeah. and I think what some of our parents might have uh, suggested earlier on, which is that you must get a job, you must get a job, and blah blah blah. In mm. a way, they are right, but I think you really shouldn't follow their advice 
too much in that sense because I think many of them think you should get a job and drop your art. Exactly. I think you should get a job and keep your art because exact. that is part of who you are. Yeah. Yeah. Keep it side by side. Okay, let's look at a couple more. Yeah. Now this figure over here mm. in the middle, what is that? So um, many a time um, you get uh, well, I've got these flashes right um, uh, of this bearded man. I'm not sure who it is. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> at first, I thought it might be like this Jesus Christ figure, uh-huh. and then if you look into paintings of antiquity, mm-hmm. you've got this bearded figure. He is known as Father Time. Uh, it could be God, uh, Zeus. There's this bearded archetype, you know, that 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 penetrates all forms of art, you know, mm-hmm. throughout the ages. So this figure sort of started like showing it, showing itself, you know, and I have this calling to like need to depict it, mm-hmm. you know. Jesus Christ was a figure that was very very big for my. For my grandparents, mm-hmm. you know their their undying faith on him it left a left a big impression on me. Um, I got my own you know questions about the faith and all that, but seeing how in times of sickness and all, uh, they'll, they'll never never um, count out to the fear of losing their losing themselves to the sickness. Uh. Mm-hmm. They held on to something that kept their strength there always. And that that strength, right, that this father figure, this archetype gave mm-hmm. is something like I love to put into my work. Right, right. That's gorgeous. And that's the figure, you know, I've used not only Christ's face mm-hmm. in that in that central figure, um uh, Lord Shiva to the Hindus I have used the Buddha all our religions use um, someone of this fatherly figure um, this 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 icon of um, perfection or enlightenment you know that all of us you know ult- ultimately uh, if we use our potential can reach mm. So that's who I try to depict at least. Oh, that's you know? gorgeous. Okay, this is definitely. Is it Jesus? So yeah, I mean Jesus Christ's face is used in there along right. with others. Mm. Um, the temple at the back is actually a manipulated photo of a Mayan temple. Right, right, right. So it's a. Uh, it's based on a song, one of my favorite songs. Actually, it's called "Temple of the King." Right. It's by a uh, by a band named Rainbow. And uh, it was trying to depict the temple of the king. I'm trying not to end up shopping on the podcast, live on the podcast, <laughs> you know. Because this stuff is really, really, really good. Uh, let's look at just one more, one second. Sure, man. Okay, now this this one over here, this mm. was unique. Yeah. Um, I noticed that you have a few series where it's mostly, it seems like a sphere. Yeah. Um, in the middle. What actually, was that about? Actually, this was brought upon um, after studying... Um, the philosophy of chakras mm, okay. okay energy centers in the body and apparently according to hinduism we have like seven of them mm. so this blue one is associated with the throat chakra mm-hmm. now sometimes you know you experience things in life where you say the wrong thing you can say hurtful things uh, then you can you introspect enough and you're like this is a very very important chakra because it's like you can create or destroy through the use of your tongue, you know, mm-hmm. uh, through what what comes out, and uh, I wanted to create a piece on this particular chakra, um, and the calm blue there reflects like uh, words of like wisdom and peace that can be transmitted through here, mm. that can ultimately bring like a blissful setting for whomever you are interacting with. Right, very cool. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I just want to highlight something to you, Ash. This is a. Um, Damn it! I forgot the term for it. It's a condenser mic, but it's a they, this part in front of you. That's the yeah. mic, not the top. Okay, yeah? got it. So uh, it, it's fine. It's good. You, what, what you're doing is fine. Just want to let you know. Thanks. Okay, so um, I think you'd have a better perspective on this than I would. Okay, I want to show you something. Sure. Title number seventeen. Okay, oh, I was cool. watching this online. Okay. Yeah. 
But let me just put your painting next to it. Um, let me get it really, really. Which is your? Oh shit! Look at this. Are you kidding me? Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. Look at this. This is Untitled Number Seventeen by Rothko, and this is Ash's work. Okay. Now, Untitled Number Seventeen, mm. if I'm not wrong, sold for about forty-four million dollars. Okay. <laughs> I, I for the life of me, I don't get right how that can be worth forty-four million dollars. Whereas that over here is worth anywhere from a hundred to two hundred dollars. I don't get it. I uh I I have the same issue as you, Nick. <laughs> I have I have been for a long time, and it's this it, this very issue that has caused a lot of like depression in the past and all that, you know. Right. And then I had to tell myself like you gotta come to terms with it. The system, right? The system of art in this world uh, is taken over by a lot of um, people with a lot of money. Mm. And they they decide what art gets out there for how much, and I I I don't understand it. I don't understand it. It's like, uh, for me personally, it it's like uh killing creativity. Mm. It's killing the inner vision. You know, you can have so much to tell, mm. and you know, looking at both of them actually, right? Um, Rothko can easily give me an entire thesis mm. on on his work also okay deriving but insane amounts of meaning is is he is he alive is he still alive no, I don't right? I don't think so okay so um okay you, s- you see yeah, Nick, yeah. I can you, we can <laughs> we can bash our heads uh, yeah. and come up with like an insane number of perspectives on why this is important to us mm. why it is brilliant why it is terrible we can do that mm. and we can actually do that for any image you see mm. so that's what that's what art is it's um it's a visual that tries that that tries to speak to you and me on any level that we can perceive <clears throat> okay look i i get exactly what you mean mm. in that sense anything can be a piece of art in that sense yeah, right but anything. but when I look at an artist, okay, I think many people think art. Maybe perhaps that's why people have this view in Singapore is that art is a bit frou frou. Basically, it's just full of nonsense, right? It's because when we look at this, actually, I think this was worth more than forty-four million dollars. Let me just check how much it sold for. Sure. Rothko, I think it was seventy million dollars. Hold on, mm. Un- uh, Rothko, Untitled Seventeen price. Let me see how much it was sold for. Oh, okay, thirty-three million six hundred eighty-two thousand. This was from U.S. dollars, yeah. So roughly about forty plus million dollars. I, I don't mind taking just the last five digits <laughs> of that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just don't get it because, okay, when we look at um, mm. comedians, I I guess and magicians and stuff like that and singers, yeah. the people making tons of money, yeah. right? You might sometimes you might not like them. Maybe they're too mainstream and stuff, but they're really good. Right mm-hmm. and from mm-hmm. the outside, you can kind of understand why they're in that position. Someone, even someone like Justin Bieber, I don't listen to Justin Bieber at all, but I can understand that he has mass appeal. Lady Gaga, when she sings her acoustic songs, is, mm. she, is it acoustic? Is that no, sorry, yeah. her vocals? Her vocal no. songs without uh, tracks in the background and stuff. She's mm. really, really, really good. Mm. Right, and if you came up to me and showed me these two pictures and asked me which one I prefer to buy, I prefer mm. to hang up, hang up in my room, mm. without question. A hundred percent of the time, I'll take the one on the left. Okay. I I just don't get it. Like what? I could do that. My two my my two and a half year old nephew could do that on the right. Mm. It's it looks like someone dropped bleach, no sorry beige paint on the top. Yeah. And then dropped red paint below that on the <laughs> yellow canvas. Yeah, That's I it. mean like I I yeah exactly what you're saying. Like I've tried yeah. I, I've tried uh, working this out in my own head. Mm. Like how how is this? How is this being done? And like whoever's in, whoever's setting the price for that to be sold, even if it's via auction, right? Mm. Why are you buying it for forty, f- thirty-three million dollars? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you know what, what's 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 the process in yeah. the buyer's head? Mm. Why is he why is he giving his wealth to something that a lot of people, not just you and me, think that could that could have been done by a child? Right. Why is he? Awarding It's almost like Awarding Someone for Like This level of work To be rewarded That much amount of money Right 
don't you think there are a lot more um, talented people out there, people with master levels of painting skills uh, mm-hmm. that have been carried forth for like, I mean, hundreds of years. There's a technique of painting called the the Mish technique. I mm-hmm. went for a course and I was taught by like these master painters, man. Mm-hmm. One from Poland and one from um, the States. And you should see their work. Mm-hmm. And I, it's like their paintings rarely sell. You know, and they don't they don't put their prices up like like insanely. Mm-hmm. It's affordable. But like it it's like art is art is dying at least in the mainstream, you know. Right. Yeah, it's just really strange. I think uh the documentary I saw on this was mainly saying that people buy this art these pieces of art because they know they can sell it in the future for more. Mm. So it's become somewhat it, of an uh, investment. So, so it's yeah. not really about art anymore, is mm. it? It's like uh, a security. It's mm. like a, a, a yeah. It's it's a security Anything feature. Anything from like hiding taxes to you know, yeah. Stuff like that. And I've I mean yeah. besides your artwork, I've seen a lot of good artwork in Singapore, right? Really, really good artwork. And it's just, I mean, it's just stunning. And honestly, I think your artwork, in my opinion, I think it's underpriced, yeah. right? But. Uh, quite a few people have told me that uh. yeah I think it's underpriced you know but see but this is the thing right Mm -hmm. Um, I don't do limited editions of my work very often Mm -hmm. so like a piece like this um, I can print it any amount of time for whoever wants it Mm -hmm. that's kind of the reason why I sell it for right the price I I told you just now right because um, I could print 2,000 5,000 if people want it and whoever wants can get Right. I don't mm. play that scarcity game with most of the work. Mm. Some of them are limited edition because I just feel like these are really special uh, to me. I, and I, you know, that game. If if I do want to play the scarcity game, then people have this idea that oh, there's only so and so much. Mm-hmm. So I'd better get it. So I no better get it, it, sort yeah. of thing. I have tried that for a few pieces. Mm-hmm. It's worked once or twice, not all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I just I- if I feel like it, then I'll put the limited edition stamp on it. But right. otherwise, no. Okay, one second. Yes. Yeah. Something. Okay. Right. So, um, for those of you on the podcast, we're just discussing Ash's work. Now uh, we're looking at different pieces of art. If you'd like to look at the artwork um, during the podcast, you can just visit my video on YouTube. Have a look at my video on YouTube, and you'll see it. Um, Ash, would you be able to put my video on your Facebook as well, just to let people yeah, know sure you did man. the podcast? Definitely. Yeah. Okay, great. And you can also download the the full podcast as an audio version on iTunes. Uh, you'll be able to get it on iTunes as well. Cool. So anyway, let's just okay. <clears throat> just one last topic about art. I can see how mm. some paintings are worth the uh, hundred million dollars, maybe. Right. I looked at this painting over here. It's called the Massacre of the Innocents. Mm. Right and it is gorgeous. It really is very, very good. Stunning, isn't it? Let me just have a look here. Mm. Yeah, just something like this. Yeah. I can see how an artwork like this could be worth anywhere from 60 to $70 million. Obviously, I, w- I wouldn't pay that much money <laughs> <laughs> since I don't have that much money. Yeah. But I can understand it. Right? This is just insane. It's masterful, isn't it? Yeah, it's very, very good. And you can yeah. see... The play on light, shadow... Mm. And you can um, see the, the, the raw emotions in, in, in the yeah. fo- in the artwork as well. You can see this man, very strong. He's smashing babies against the ground, actually. You can it's see the, the sickly babies on the floor. It's pure brutality, you know? Yeah. And the thing is, a, a painting like this, right, will immediately, at least for me, I don't know about you, mm. get me questioning, get an internal dialogue going. Mm. A lot of like the pop art and all that down there, it's just like, a, it's a slap to your intelligence for me. Mm. Okay, and that's why I don't like, I don't like pop art. What, what is pop art? Pop art would be like anything that is, that is derived or inspired by like Andy Warhol. <laughs> and I, 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 I be very honestly, I okay. hate the bugger. Okay, I'm gonna I just look at this. <laughs> what pop art is? Is this pop art? This I okay. You 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 type in Andy Warhol. Okay, I'll type in Andy Warhol. <laughs> okay, this is interesting. I just okay, so Andy Warhol art is that fine? Yeah. Okay. You know Salvador Dali and you know some of the other fantastic painters of time mm-hmm. met with this guy and you know they they thought he was an unintelligent 
just like an ape, you know. <laughs> okay, and like I mean, look at the art. He right. did this um, this Campbell soup thing, mm-hmm. and that w- that that got how much space in uh, the Singapore Art Museum. I, mm-hmm. I went for I went for the uh, Andy Warhol exhibition. I just want to see, try and expand my mind, get over maybe this um, this ego. You know, mm-hmm. this, maybe it's ego that's making me feel like you're you're fucked up. You know, yeah. you're <laughs> fucked up. I said, okay, like get over yourself. Go, mm-hmm. give it a chance. Try and expand your own mind. Try and include. Include what he's doing, mm-hmm. you know. What's art for you is art for you, but what's art for him? Because maybe he's being true to himself, also, right? Mm-hmm. So go and try and include include him. Mm-hmm. Hey, couldn't do it. <laughs> 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 couldn't do it, bro. Sorry, but I tried, lah. Okay, so okay, when I look at this thing, mm. I imagine that mm. the reason why he put this painting up is it's a painting, is it? I think so. Right. Uh, I think the reason why he did this is probably just a, a, a middle finger to the art world. Would that mm. be it? I guess, um, yeah, maybe it was, you know, maybe. And if it was a middle finger to the art world, then the thing is, he people get inspired by these things, you <laughs> see? So you got like generations after following, right. saying, and if they are saying fuck art, then uh, they've done a royally like good job at it. Chairman Mao. I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's funny yeah, shit. It's funny <laughs> But then like Is it art you know right. Is it art You question yourself And like Ah You, you, know, you know the one with the um, What's the chick's name Next to John Lennon M- Marilyn Monroe Yeah Marilyn yeah. Monroe So mm. I guess This would have been A little bit uh, uh, Well Kind of out of the box For it's time Because mm-hmm. You got You got these combination Of colours that, that are Quite out there and right. it's they, they, neon, right? they don't yeah. seem to match you know mm-hmm. but then you got this figure there and it it looks like um, it looks like a there's togetherness but then at the same time the colors throw you off completely so mm. maybe this was kind of like out of the box back then I, I mm. don't know but it, it doesn't appeal to me uh, like we saw the massacre of the innocents just now. Mm. I mean, come on, there's there's, mm. there's mastery in that work, you know. Right. There's there's patience and detail. There's a lot detail. of detail. Now I'm not saying that yeah. there's no patience inside this, uh, mm-hmm. but then it's like, uh, right? You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, it, it's missing the the it, feeling like it's it's the best in that art world. You know that that feeling. Many people tend to think of Andy Warhol as the best artist around in that kind of sense. You know. In, especially in mainstream mm. People think Alright he's the best He's the best mm. But I, I think In a way It's kind of like Justin Bieber You know Where yeah. people think Justin Bieber's the best He's not he's a, he's a great singer I guess But I mean Listen to Mariah Carey Listen to Whitney Houston and you know, but it, yeah. No this is the thing It's like um, You have a very Very narrow uh, Minded Viewpoint mm-hmm. Of what exists mm-hmm. Maybe half the people don't even know that this and this and this exist. Right, right. It's there. The amazing art is there from all over the world, from hundreds of years ago, it's there. Mm-hmm. But because you're so bombarded every day by the contemporary, mm-hmm. what's contemporary and what is told to you that is popular, mm-hmm. this is what you should fix your f- uh, uh, framework around. Right. Don't look outside this. Because right. we're telling you what's good, we're telling you what sells for millions. This is art, right? Okay, and the objective to free your own self is to go beyond that. Right. Never leave yourself in the framework or inside the box that they tell you. Mm-hmm. That's the one thing I would tell fellow artists. I I, I do see this a lot with music, um, <clears throat> whereas the pop the pop music. I mean it's basically pop art pop music it penetrates know. everything yeah. it's like you have no choice but to listen to it right and then you know you get crazy fans who are crazy about the latest pop artists and stuff but there are some artists who I do find are really really good for example mm. um, I think Beyonce is really good okay. she's a mainstream singer yeah. I think she deserves a spot for sure right um, and you know you've got you got One Direction and you know these boy bands and stuff like that I, I understand the appeal right and but the problem is sometimes people look at music and think these guys are dominating the music world then. yeah correct because yeah. if you blast it everywhere yeah. uh, play it on all the radio stations multiple times a day people will think well this is it this is the best <laughs> this, this, is the best this must be the best <laughs> they're playing it right. all the time 
Yeah. But then you got bands like like Queen and Led mm. Zeppelin and all these things that existed. Yeah, they were from they're not contemporary, right. but their music has stood the test of time right. because you got people playing it now 40 40 50 years later mm-hmm. giving them the goosebumps that the new age music can't. You know? I I had one of my friends tell me that he he prefer listening to One Direction over the Beatles. And I'm like, uh, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> yeah, but that's the thing. Like, oh, I mean, shit. contemporary <laughs> tastes come into the picture, and right. you know, if you're like an old school kind of guy, you look at him and you're like, wow, bro. Okay, so of the art for now, I like to yeah. ask you a few questions. Sure, How can man. we develop the art scene in Singapore? Not, well, not just the artwork, as in, you know, art that you do, but yeah. performing arts, music, singing. Um, magic comedy, I think com- comedy, I think yeah. Singapore is already like you know I've seen so much more happening mm-hmm. these last like few years as compared to before mm-hmm. um, I think we're going in the right direction cultivating art I think um, if we keep going with this flow we're gonna land in some nice places we're gonna land in good places but I still feel like that a lot of art forms are are not the the mystical and the ethereal right mm-hmm. the spiritual these these three uh, these three aspects of art uh, could help singapore flourish into a really more holistic mm-hmm. um uh make singapore a more holistic inclusion of art uh. mm-hmm. come on let's not let's not just give it up for pop and like let's let's include a little more right. let's widen our scope of what art can be uh. That, that's one you know? of the things that I've been wanting to bring into magic actually um, lately I've been doing I, at the MOE event that mm. I had uh, oh yeah. shit I don't think I should mention the company <laughs> damn it actually it doesn't matter they hired me for an event recently okay Okay. and uh, one of the things that I did on stage it's, it's kind of spooky I've been trying to bring in a lot more spooky stuff almost spiritual stuff into magic mm. because I feel many people think of magicians as people Walking around with a box and getting ready, waiting, just waiting to saw a lady in half and pull out rabbits and yeah. you know that kind of stuff. Whereas what I did was on stage was to bring a lady up. Yeah. I didn't know her. I'd never met her. Okay. And through body language, I basically guessed her birthday, her exact birth date. That's insane. Yeah. And people were shocked, but not many people understand that that is part of being a magician, or okay. almost being a mentalist. Okay. Yeah. Right. These are the stuff that you can get if you yeah. hire the right magician or the men- or mentalist. Sure, right? sure. But in the same sense, many people think of magicians as the guy with the box, you know. And one of the things I did on stage was to walk to a lady with her eyes closed, mm. touch her on her shoulder twice, yeah. And someone else across the room felt that touch at the same time. Right. Right. So it's just one of those slightly spooky poltergeisty. Yeah. <laughs> kind of magic. I mean, yeah, that I enjoy doing. Yeah. The, you you got to change the opinion. Of mm. what what the mainstream thinks of what a magician is, right. you know it can be so much more. It's the same for art. Mm. You know the art form can be so much more, but people only think this way. So please allow for the artist to show you mm. that it can be this and this and this. Right. Allow for the magician to show you that magic doesn't need to be the box and the lady being sawn in half. It can be so much more. Right. That's right. how we are going to improve the art scene. Yeah, it's not always about. Just card tricks, coin tricks, or whatever. It's no. can also be, I could do magic anytime. I could do a full no. show yeah. without any material. Exactly. Yeah, that's what a magician can do. And artists, I think nowadays artists are just almost looked down upon. When I first when I first met you mm. at the should I mention? Yeah, I'll just the mention British Council. British yeah. Council. Yeah. When I first met Ash at the British Council, um, and he he told me he was an artist, right? And I I just immediately made a judgment about Ash. That okay, an artist he might be interesting, but he might be a bit of a tosser. <laughs> 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 right? That's what I thought when I met Ash. Like okay, he might be, and then it turns out that when I went to look at his artwork and stuff, I was like, okay, shit, this is really really good. <laughs> this is different than what I imagined it to be. Yeah. And when I went to look at the prices, I was like, what? Come on, it's impossible. It just it doesn't fit the idea of a, an artist in my mind. Yeah, you know. And I have a friend. Who I met in national uh, during national service, he does artwork just entirely with pencils. Okay, and he puts himself down. That's one of the things I find really mm. sad. Mm-hmm. Is now nah, it's not good enough. It's not good enough. Yeah. Said, of course it's good enough. You're really really good. It's freaking good. You know his artwork with pencils, and now he's teaching 
art in uh, one of the local schools. Cool. Right. So I'm really happy with it. Yeah. Right. But I don't think he has the confidence that you have to just sell something online and just let it go. Ah, I see. Okay. So a lot of artists they they keep their work hidden from the public domain, mm-hmm. you know, because maybe there's this they need the this internal validation that yeah. oh, I am good. I am good. And I struggled with that too before. Right. But then um I guess all artists come with uh, with an ego of sorts. Mm-hmm. I, I would need the ego to put it online in the first place. Right. If I if I really like, I didn't care. Why why should I show anybody? Why but I wanted to make it my life. The monetary aspect of life is mm-hmm. there. How how as a human being am I going to survive? Blah 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 blah. I need to put it up in the public domain. I need to show people might buy. I get money. I can pay my bills. Blah blah blah. One of the things yeah. that I'm trying to do to break the stereotype of magic being very typical is mm. to just I'm, I'm you seen the tale of Singapore, the little no. video I did with the the card trick I did. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's yeah. call it the tale of Singapore. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, I just put it up. You know, you never know what's going to happen, and suddenly got three thousand plus people who saw it. There you go. That's actually a big deal to me because three thousand plus people in Singapore is mm. a fraction of the people that we have in the country. I can actually say, you know what? Almost a zero point one percent. No matter how small it is, zero point one percent in Singapore hmm. of uh, people in Singapore have seen my video. That's yeah. pretty. I'm really happy with that. Yeah. Right. And I'm looking at your Facebook stuff. You've got about twelve to uh, eleven, eleven to twelve thousand fans on your Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really, really proud of that. That's insane. That's really. Good. I mean, that's that's like built up over qu- a number of years. Mm. Uh, but at the same time, because you know, people choose to either share the work. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, tell a friend about it or whatever. Mm. I mean, things can spread fast, you know. Right, that's very yeah. good. And my video ended up on Facebook as well. I like got a yeah, thousand exactly. plus people there. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, so let's talk about work, work, work. Sure. English work. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So how how are you doing in school? It's a very very rewarding <laughs> job. When you have that light bulb moment and a child suddenly gets all the tutoring and teaching you're doing and suddenly knows how to read. I teach phonics specifically Mm. to kids between um, ages between um, four and ten right now. Right. Okay, so you require a shit ton of patience for sure. Absolutely. Do do you want to announce which company you teach at? Uh, I teach at a company called I Can Read. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, are they local students or foreign? Um, students? you. I I have a mix, mostly local. I do have a couple of Japanese and Korean mm-hmm. kids as well. Right. So, I can't do that job, right? Because I have very limited patience when it comes to to children. Mm. How how do you overcome that? I guess actually the artwork has helped with uh, forming the patience levels. Mm. Um, I never have I. I've always been an imp- impatient person mm-hmm. and the artwork was the one that taught me sit down for 8 to 10 hours at a stretch forget your eating work on me mm. and it's happened before so my levels of patience have definitely who I am now is a result of like patience learnt through art mm-hmm. yeah oh well, this is very interesting so absolutely when you get a a, a child um how long does it take that person to read? Um, anywhere between uh, one and a half to two years. Oh my goodness! Oh, that's hard. Yeah, and they have they have several programs, so it's like step by step program, you know. So the kids join at maybe age um, two and a half or three, mm-hmm. and then they learn um, you know first sounds, last sounds, all the way till um, they can put put sounds together in a way that formulates a right, word until they can read. Wow. Okay, that is really fascinating because I have yeah. horrible patience with children. I just, I just don't like other people's kids. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So like my nephew and any kid that's related to me somehow, and I'm I'm happy to spend time with them. Sure. But when it comes to kids whom I don't know, mm. I have like super limited patience. I can't stand right. them. Right. Right. So right, I'm right. sure you've got you know screaming kids in your class before. Stuff like that happens all the time. Happens Happens sometimes mm-hmm. Then you gotta You gotta discern And be a little strict When you can mm-hmm. But put them in their place When they have to Or else you know they can Waste their mom and dad's money Right and Yeah It can get pretty expensive too sometimes So one of the things that 
that that's how we ended up meeting was at the British Council. We yeah. did El Celta together. Yeah. And I ended up teaching in a school called LSBF, the okay. London School of Business and Finance. Yeah. And my students are entirely different than yours. Mine are, my students are 19, my youngest student right now is 19 years old. Mm. And my oldest student is 30, 34. Right, so I get a lot of very interesting perspectives about Singapore, about the people coming into Singapore is right. especially. It's very, very interesting. Because, and before this, I was in another, another private institution as well, teaching. And how, how can I put this? Well, when we look at the hmm, my Chinese students, okay, my my Chinese students who are generally women, come to class wearing Prada, Louis Vuitton, mm-hmm. Louis Vuitton, sorry, um, dresses, really nice gowns and stuff like that. It's just it's it's a, somewhat of a fashion show, but yep. they are actually very interested in learning. They want to learn, um, and they're great students. You know, they are twenty plus years old, and they are generally. Uh, wives of rich Chinese businessmen in Singapore mm. I've got some of the I've got some really interesting other students as well for example I've got a student from Turkey and something very interesting happened with him mm. <laughs> I've got to tell you about this again it was really strange so this Turkish student is one of the nicest guys I've ever met okay. okay and he was telling me about national service in his country and he was posted okay national service in Turkey is not like national service in Singapore Right, if you're if you're a Singaporean and you serve national service, I know it's horrible, right? But it's not as bad as some of the ones I've seen. This guy in Turkey yeah. lost his two best friends while he did national service. Okay. He showed me their their graves and stuff because he was posted to a little camp outside of uh, Turkey at mm-hmm. the border of Syria, mm-hmm. right? And um, he but even though he had lost his friends, yeah, through basically gunfire, um, he is. Perhaps the nicest, most pleasant guy I've ever met. Okay, but he has a very interesting perspective on life because in class once we had this situation where we we were talking about McDonald's. So I and I just asked the question, "Where is McDonald's from?" Yeah, right. And uh, you know the answer. You expect America. Ray sure. uh, Ray Kroc, I think his name is. <coughs> See, he says McDonald's is from Israel. <laughs> so I said, okay, right and. Because we've got so many different nationalities in class, and I think we learned this in CELTA as well, we mm. don't really push topics that aren't out of, at the edge of English, you know? It's sure. not really related. So I don't want to start a little war in my class. So I said, fine. What other companies are from Israel? So he says, okay, uh, KFC, mm-hmm. um, Apple, Google, and all these big, massive companies he started naming off. And then he said, no, no, but you know Burger King's from USA. <laughs> and I said, okay. And then he did something really strange. He said, "Okay, wait. I'm going to check on the internet." So I said, "Okay." All right. He looked down at his phone. He went to check, and then he said, "Yup, McDonald's is from Israel." I'm oh. like, "What?" <laughs> okay, first of all, I know where McDonald's is from. Everyone knows where McDonald's is from. Yeah. We all know where KFC is from. It's Kentucky Fried Chicken, right? Exactly. <laughs> okay, and he had, he's just weird. Like, how can you check it on your phone and tell and me then, that it's from yeah, Israel? Yeah, exactly. You know, so. Yeah, it's just weird. Some people just have a different perspective of of life. I guess I don't know mm-hmm. what website he was looking at. It was just strange. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, let me. T- I've got a couple more for you. Sure. Okay. Um. Yes, we met. Um. Earlier on, before the British Council, we met early on, and we've got a friend called Kristen. Yeah. Yeah. So Kristen is kind of interesting, because this is something I notice a lot overseas. About. The fairness and equality of homos- uh, uh, homosexuals and transgender and stuff like that. Um, I'm really I'm perfectly fine with homosexuality. I think if you're homosexual, whatever, I don't really care, right? That that's my that's my idea, sure. Uh, in that sense, but we have a friend who is raising Kristen, who's raising a gender neutral child. Okay. Why do you think she's doing that? What's happening there? I mean, I think. As adults, uh, uh, educated, learned adults, we all have um, we all have our own basic choice to make when it comes to children, mm-hmm. especially to children. It's uh, it's an extension of us. Mm-hmm. I believe it is in that person's Kirsten's 
best interest mm. to raise it such it could be due to um, past uh, experiences mm-hmm. experiences of like maybe hate right such that you know such an such a such a non mainstream way of bringing up a child is introduced you know right i've spoken to kristen personally and she still hasn't told me whether her, her son is a <laughs> whether her son is a boy or girl <laughs> i just revealed it okay whoopsie okay i mean personally yeah. like i find it strange yeah but i i don't think that independent choice should be taken away from the from the parent um mm. he or she knows the best decision to make it's firstly not my business to go and interfere mm-hmm. but at the same time you do wonder like what what repercussions will this have on the child mm. you know is right. it is it my duty to say something <sighs> like would you say something i don't know i mean if you would you at least speak your mind and say your standpoint on the subject and then leave the person to you know make their own decision after that yeah i mean i i've spoken to her before and i mm. said like what the fuck are you doing mm-hmm. right like what what's the why why would you do this yeah right and i mean she just spoke to me about it and stuff it's just i don't know it's just a bit uh, mm. so you yeah. see that mm, feeling <laughs> for it, it it makes us feel that feeling right yet it's not happening to us it's not happening to our child Mm-hmm. So it's like uh, human beings have this tendency to want to get <laughs> involved when others make choices. Now, I, I think that's uh, that has to do with a lot of conflict in the world. Uh. Mm-hmm. We stick our noses into things that aren't any of our business, mm-hmm. but because we do that, a lot of people are freed from what what could be a potential life of suffering. Uh. Mm-hmm. So that's uh, a give and take, I think. Right. Yeah. Anyway, um, do you think that homosexuality will eventually become legal in Singapore? Well, it is. I wouldn't say it's not. It's illegal, but marriage. Yeah, marriage in Singapore. Well, is illegal I, for sure. I, I really, I, I hope so because to me, how I see it is, you, uh, you are totally denying someone of uh, two people of loving each other to the point where they can get married. Mm. That that's it. It's very clear cut for me. It's like you 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 recognize love when it comes to man woman, mm. uh, but you cannot recognize it, even though it's so in your face. Mm-hmm. Um, either because you know religions tell you one thing, and then you know suddenly that's not love. Right. Yeah, so for for those of you who are just trying to guess, Ash is straight. <laughs> I'm straight. Ash man. is a beautiful wife and a beautiful daughter son son a beautiful son yeah. right i've i've never met him be a son before but we will meet you will day. yes right so my my fiance i just recently perform, uh, proposed to my fiance we congratulations uh, I proposed buddy. to her in japan it was really good yeah, yeah i've been with her for like 10 years nice okay. uh, Cheryl. some of i'm sure you guys have seen her on my youtube channel before right but with regards to homosexuality i think this is my view in in Singapore with regards to marriage. <coughs> if you deny them the right to get married, mm. they're going to be miserable. Mm. Okay, even worse than that, some of them might try to live a lie, some of them might try to live a straight life, mm-hmm. and end up with someone else, a woman. Okay. And if you if they force themselves to do that, I think they're going to ruin the lives of that woman too. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. So, I homosexuality is not my thing. You know, it's not your thing, but I don't think we should take that right away from those people. Absolutely. You know, why, why torture them? I just don't get it. And I know I've heard some things like it destroys the sanctity of marriage and all that. Oh, come on. I mean, the original idea of marriage was for owning of property. A man who married his wife, it basically meant that mm. that wife was the man's property. That was the original idea, the yeah. original point of marriage. You know, so that's not a good. <laughs> See, doesn't protect, doesn't yeah. it make you wonder also, right? Yeah. Why do I need this paper mm-hmm. and this ceremony to say that I am married? Mm-hmm. Why can't I make that choice anyway with my partner? Yes, the current laws and all that don't allow for gay marriage, right? But like, let's step it up, right? Mm-hmm. If you really want to live that committed relationship with this other person, think of it beyond the piece of paper and the ceremony. Mm-hmm. You can even still have a ceremony. You're just not. Uh, lawfully known as 
a uh, husband and husband or wife or wife mm. but it it doesn't matter does it mm. truly the love for this individual uh, goes beyond what is rightful in the eyes of the the law mm. the law uh, doesn't even recognize your love in the first place mm. why are you pushing it to recognize when it when it doesn't even want to give you that level of respect yeah i mean i i can understand that but i think they might feel discriminated against in the, in that sense because it it is dis- yeah. dis- discriminatory I, mm. i i firmly believe that but like you really want to live your life together with your partner mm. and this the law is not giving you the the respect it deserves sure that's mm. why all the upheaval you know uh, society goes through and all that yes it's for the ultimate better and change mm-hmm. for it all but um i personally like if it happened to me i would look beyond the paper mm-hmm. i don't need a piece of paper to tell me i don't need someone else to recognize my love and commitment for someone it's be- between me and that person Finish. one of the things i recently read i think i heard about it on a on a youtube video was that interracial marriage mm. in america was only legal in some states in 1970s or 1967 or something like that yeah and i'm thinking if i had to be in that situation right it would be really difficult for me as well can you imagine you know? just yeah. what what emotions you go through just knowing that the love of your life mm-hmm. is denied yeah <laughs> to you that's horrible your love is denied mm-hmm. and i don't think people um feel themselves in those shoes when they're thinking about like you know uh, approving gay marriage and things like that you know There's so much hate Mm-hmm. For what? It's like you're not putting yourself in the place of the other person. Mm-hmm. There are little fragments of. Uh, I wouldn't. Sometimes people say that there's racism in Singapore. I I wholeheartedly disagree. Mm. I don't feel any sense of racism in Singapore, especially um, systematic or systemic racism, or institutional racism. It's very, 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 very little, almost non-existent. But I think earlier on in my relationships that I had, uh, it was quite common for when you meet. Chinese parents for example mm, mm. they look at you a little bit disparagingly because you weren't you know of a certain race right i'm used to it because my mom is malay yeah my dad is sikh yeah. right so i'm half and half right my girlfriends pretty much all my girlfriends have been chinese um so you kind of get used to that look you know but at some point i just said you know what fuck off i don't care you know i don't care about your opinions about me i don't care If the parents think of me a certain way, I don't care. This is their problem. I'm not, I I don't want you guys to be in my life anyway. The only reason I'm interested in the the only reason we have a, any sense of connection is because of the girl. I like her, she likes me. That's exactly. it. Exactly. Right? No one else matters, you know. That's it. I think that's something that some Singaporeans are going through sometimes, mm. especially with the racial population that we have of almost a quarter of uh Singaporeans being non-Chinese sure. and the rest being Chinese. So there's mm. going to be a mix. Yeah. Right? Yeah, every now and then, and you know, you do get some funky comments on YouTube and those stupid things like that. Oh, you're fucking Indian or whatever. I don't give a damn. You yeah. know, I mean, first of all, I'm not even Indian. <laughs> That's the thing. Like, <laughs> I mean, really, yeah. like at this age, you yeah. you just ask yourself, come on, I can look past this. This is ridiculous. Yeah. And people who do make such comments, I mean, grow up. Uh, yeah, I mean, you do. You you know. Know. It's interesting because when you look at their comments and you look at yeah. where they come from, their whole pages on Facebook and stuff all these kind of comments you know they just yeah. online trolls and stuff so yeah. get over it yeah anyway how's the new ball and chain you mean the wife <laughs> and child <laughs> <laughs> it's really really like life changing the, the every cliche uh phrase i can give you it it applies to it's it's beautiful experience overwhelming as hell mm. uh i learned to well finally be less selfish mm-hmm. i put the the wife and child first mm-hmm. you know it's uh, sometimes like a really hard choice to make uh, um, but it's the right one it's it's the most molding one and you know you're becoming a better person at the end of the day mm-hmm. you know is it expensive to have kids um, you know what with the current grants and all that we also have like help from our parents on both sides um it's it's going okay we both work mm-hmm. um it's all right it's manageable yeah what do you think about the cost of living in singapore 
Um, I think it's a bit insane. Right. After having lived in Australia for a long time, um, you know, I just no, I I don't think this is like the long term place for my wife, my son, and I also. Is it? Is it? What's expensive about it? Um, I think housing mostly. Mm-hmm. I just I, I knowing that a million bucks, half a million bucks can can get me somewhere like really beautiful. Mm. And space, space is space mm. is expensive here. You know? Right, space is absurd. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, you'd like this idea of like your son running in a garden, or like yeah, you know, just having a nice open space to grow up in. You know, and yeah the, I, w- I would say that's that's one of my biggest drawbacks I think the price of having your son or daughter run in the garden mm. is going to cost about three million dollars in Singapore yeah, yeah that's, that's the price of it yeah. you can bring him to the park of course but it is expensive but I've, I've, I've always felt that uh, public housing is affordable it's not insane but it is affordable in HDB mm-hmm. um, which Cheryl and I will apply for eventually yeah. soon yeah, it's gonna cost maybe three hundred k. Yeah, there will be a budget for it. You know, and Singaporeans do benefit from it um, when they sell it off. Yeah, and actually, there's something interesting I wanna ask sure. ask you about. We, I'm sure your friends, your colleagues are some of them are expats. Yeah, I've got plenty of expat friends as well. Sure. You know, you see a lot of Singaporeans complaining about how Singapore treats expats really well. Blah 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 blah. And Singaporeans are second class mm-hmm. citizens. Blah blah. Mm-hmm. I think it's nonsense, but whatever. Okay, I heard my expats. Friends, my expat friends, talk about an expat tax. Really? <laughs> so it's like an on, ongoing joke amongst them, saying, "Yeah, you know, oh, I want to go to the doctor. How much is going to cost me?" And then another one says, "Blah blah blah." And it's, "Oh yeah, it's the expat tax." <laughs> right. So I think they're saying that because they don't get the subsidies that we do. Got it. Got right. It. Okay. So they can't buy an HDB at three hundred k. They can't no. buy an EC at seven hundred thousand. They have to go private every single time. Oh, I see. And that's where prices are jacked the fuck up, man. Mm. You know, uh, for those of you uh, who are listening in, foreign listeners and stuff, a house in Singapore, a thousand square foot house, and on the private market, is going to cost a million dollars easily. A thousand square feet. So roughly it's about a thousand dollars per square foot. Right? So look at the size of your foot, draw a little square with it, that's a thousand dollars. (laughs) Right? <laughs> oh, what a way of looking at and, it. And, and, and you don't own it for life. You own it for 99 years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, they were talking about the expat tax. That thought mm. was funny. All right. So, we're going to wrap this up soon. Any shout outs? Do you have any shout outs? To my wife, to my child, mm-hmm. my parents, my very, very supportive parents, my very supportive uh, in laws as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've been amazing throughout this journey. Yeah? And mom and dad have never given up on my art. Mm. They've seen me through all my low times and encouraged me the whole way. If you got a son or daughter who uh, who is struggling, struggling to accept his or her own art, mm. but you can recognize a talent where they can't, just encourage that. It goes a really long way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, where can we find your work? Uh, you can just type in Jungle Eye on Facebook. My entire catalog of work is there. I post up new work very often, once a week. Twice a week if, I, if I'm prolific enough. Otherwise, you can uh, go to www.jungle-i.com. Mm-hmm. I haven't updated the page with newer works, but um, if you do want to buy a piece or something, um, I don't know if you could include my email address on the bottom. Sure, sure, I will. Um, my name at gmail.com. Uh, you, you, you include Your it for name. me, please. Yeah, my full name is one okay. word mm-hmm. at gmail.com. Um, yeah, and if you want to get in touch with me, just... Get a piece for your house, even gift it to a friend, to a girlfriend. I do commissioned works as well. So if you have like a nice high quality photograph of like you and your girlfriend or like something of your mom, I can turn it into something surreal, something cosmic for you. Just give me a shout out. Okay. Thank you very much. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that has been Sleepless in Singapore. Thank you to my first guest. Thank you, Nick. Thanks, buddy. Thanks for having me. And kiss kiss everyone. Take care. Bye bye. Ciao. (laughs) Okay, buddy, thank you very much. Thanks, I'm bro. I'm sorry, I lost track of time. I didn't All good, I didn't even realize you. <laughs>